The new NFL season kicks off tomorrow night, and that means there's just one day left to draft your fantasy team and set your lineup. So how can you make sure your team is in top shape? Let's take this to our group chat. ESPN fantasy football analyst Field Yates is here, along with ABC News business reporter Alexis Christophorus and ABC News contributor, senior entertainment writer at ESPN's Anscape, Kelly Carter. Uh, Kelly, let's start with the beginners listening. If this is your first time doing fantasy football, what are you getting yourself into and how does it all work? You have to understand that this is a commitment. This is, it's fun to do the, the draft, you know, with everyone and try and grab up, you know, athletes that you've heard of before, maybe that have graced magazine covers or somehow infiltrated pop culture and therefore are familiar to you. But every week, you have to change your lineup. It does not end with you selecting your team. And I say that because a guy that you might have heard of before, Don Cheadle, decided to play fantasy football for the first time in 2018 because then Captain America, Chris Evans, told him you should join our fantasy team with Paul Rudd. And he did not realize that it was a really months long commitment, several months long commitment that he had to keep coming back every week to change his lineup, find out who's on injury reserve. And of course, he came in dead last. You don't want to come in dead last, not to Captain America's team or anyone else's team. So it's a commitment and you have to know every week you have to literally be in the game. <laughs> Kelly, did the producers feed you this information? Because the conversation planning this segment was how I tried to do this for years. And I would always start <laughs> off saying, this year I'm going to commit. And every time by week three, someone was telling me, uh, Diane, your quarterback's injured. You might want to you know, trade him. And I would still literally. forget. It's just, you know, yeah. it's not for everyone. Oh, so no. I know, same, same. <laughs> Field, what kind of <laughs> tips uh, can you give us, or those who are actually doing this? Um, who are the most draft players this year? And who do you think, more importantly, maybe flying under the radar that you think could have a breakout season? Yeah, well, let's start with the basics. It is important to set a lineup every week. <laughs> and generally speaking, you like to have players that are healthy and they're actually playing that week. Uh, each team has one bye week during the 18-week regular season. So you don't want to have Patrick Mahomes in your lineup during the Sunday that he and his Chiefs teammates are kicking back and watching football from the couch. But I know it's going to seem crazy when Patrick Mahomes is the best player in the NFL and other quarterbacks are considered the very best. But in fantasy, there are actually a lot of good fantasy football options at quarterbacks. You're going to prioritize in your drafts running backs, and wide receivers. You're going to try to load up on those players early. And some of these players may be household names. Christian McCaffrey and Saquon Barkley and Derrick Henry amongst the very best running backs in the entire NFL. And Justin Jefferson and Jamar Chase and Cooper Cup amongst the very best wide receivers in the NFL. It tends to correlate with them being outstanding fantasy players as well. So you're going to be le leaning into the names that are probably already familiar to the average football fan. Just make sure that you're a little more patient at quarterback because those are easier to find in fantasy. And Alexis, let's talk about the business end of this because this has turned into quite the quite the event. It's huge. It is huge. And uh, the potential continues to be very huge. So of the 57 million who play some sort of fantasy sports, 40 million of them play fantasy football. It's estimated to be a $20 billion uh, industry. That is $6 billion more than current estimated NFL revenue, four and a half times more than the top valued uh, flight team in the NFL, which is the Dallas Cowboys. Wow. Dra I know. Isn't it crazy? That gives you an idea. DraftKings and FanDuel are the two biggest players here, and they are among the top five spenders on television advertising. So there's a lot at stake. Yeah, and I helped to support them for a few years, basically lighting that money on fire <laughs> until I finally quit. Uh, so, Field, after the draft, what's the best strategy for staying on top of the league? I know yeah. one is to actually remember to participate, but beyond that, um, and should you be making lots of trades or kind of watching uh, to see what happens? Yeah, I think that uh, one of the cool parts about fantasy football is it's a choose your own adventure endeavor. So if you're a person who wants to try to make a million trades because you'll never be able to execute a trade in real life for athletes, this is the sport for you. This is the activity for you. I know that Kelly mentioned it is a commitment and it does last several months. I will say, though, it's less labor intensive than other fantasy sports options like baseball and basketball. So with football, you're generally checking in on your lineup two or three times a week using the waiver wire and, of course, trying to make those trades.
markets, perhaps for somebody in your league who is not necessarily paying as much attention and is willing to turn over some of their best players. All right, Field Yates, Kelly Carter, Alexis Christophorus. I still won't be doing fantasy football <laughs> this year, but I very much appreciate the analysis. Thank you all. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.